Welcome to the Perspective Podcast. Joe Sway here. Uh, as you guys probably already know from the Democratic Republic of Congo, I uh, attended the Old Roberts University. Um, you know, from what I hear at times I preach, but, you know, we usually don't talk about those type of things. And to my left, we have uh, Chase Brown. He was born in Texas. He attended University of North Texas. He's an aspiring philanthropic creative. It is June 21st. And it is 150 degrees outside, possibly. <laughs> but he's committed, he's dedicated, and, you know, he's steadfast. And he loves very long walks on the beach. Why that is, I hope we're able to get into that on this episode. And he's so, single, ladies. Yes, that as well. Uh, Chase Brown, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. Despite being single, I'm good, I guess. Hey, There's nothing wrong with being living your best hey, life, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we all are. So yeah. it's fun. But no, nah, I'm doing good. Well, just make sure. Are you single? Or is there any news we I can talk I am single, about? yeah. Okay, okay. I had, that pause was not because I was <laughs> yeah, trying to hide something. I was not the, trying to hide something. Yeah, you know, that pause okay, was, a, okay. was a pregnant pause to think about, Lord, why am I still single? Mm. I wanted to make sure what <laughs> I was saying was correct. We hadn't talked in a couple months. I'm single. Um, but I'm doing well. Um, been a Been a fun couple weeks. Yeah. Our boy Austin, who we'll have on the podcast here within the next month or so, moved in last week. And mm. so, you know, anytime a 6'10 guy moves in, you know, it's a new adventure <laughs> yeah. already. But, um, but yeah, it's been fun, man. And the Lord's been good. We had a good meeting with Tiffany last night. Mm. So, yeah. shout out to her. But how are you doing, bro? I'm good. Good and ready to, what the kids call it, rock and roll. I'm not really sure what all that <laughs> means, but I'm ready to do just kids that. Call it. Um, it's very hot outside. You know, and, and why so, are you wearing a hoodie? Because it's cold in here, so it kind of works out. You know, good. I want to catch you. I want to make it that way. Yeah, I don't want to catch Ebola or anything. So, anyways, uh, with that being said, we have a very special guest. I don't know if that's how Ebola works. Is it too soon works. to make Ebola jokes? I don't know. I heard, I heard it recently, so I think it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If we can make COVID jokes, we can make Ebola jokes. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there was a swine flu before that, and then what's next? We're in the monkeypox stage. True. Uh oh. That might be too soon for that. True. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure we'll figure that part out. Your conversation. <laughs> uh, as you guys probably already heard, or maybe read from your title, or maybe you just clicked this video surprisingly because you saw the lighting and you thought, "Wow, what a great video!" So, either way, we're glad Three you're here. Really good looking men. Comments. That's why. They That's exactly what must have happened. It. Single. Yeah. Two of them are single. Are you single? Huh? Are you single? Yeah. Okay, well, then yeah, three yeah. of them are single. Three of them. You know? Three of them are single. <laughs> Suddenly, um, it's turned into a dating podcast. It really did. And I'm like, hijacking your happen? intro, so I'll yeah. be quiet right no, now. No, it's okay. We won't get to your, your, your dating here in a second. Um, <laughs> so we have a... Um, we have a, a bachelor here with us mm-hmm. here on this on today's podcast. Not the uh, bachelor, but not the bachelor, yeah, but a bachelor. A, yeah. Have you ever been on the show? No, no. no. I have been. Uh, I did almost. I got asked to be on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and so I almost did the whole audition thing, but said no. You would have been the Christian guy who yeah. was like, I don't. That everybody hates on both sides. Yeah. Because if you're the Christian guy, you can't win on right. the Bachelor. Period. For Christians or for non-Christians, it's right. Just, mm-hmm. Because you're not praying enough, or you're not yeah. doing. Yeah. Why is he on the Bachelor? He's a yeah. Christian. And that's that side. And then the other side is like the total side. It's like, oh, he's a Christian, you know? Yeah. Mm. It's not good. Huh. Maybe we'll have a perspective Christian podcast. Anyways, <laughs> um, with that being said, we have a very special guest for you guys today. Um, you know, it took us a few few years to really um, convince him to, to join us here on the mm-hmm. podcast. So we're, so, mm-hmm. we're so thrilled. We're so glad that he was finally able to take some time with us little people. Yeah, um, right. He's a five-time most connected man in the state of Texas. Uh, it's a very high prestigious award, but he's gotten that. I can't um, sit through this already. No, he's I, can't, a, I can't sit through this. He's, he's a four-time... Um, he does so much. We're still trying to figure out yeah. what all that he actually does. Me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a three-time... <laughs> Longhorn alum, hey, shout out. What's up? Oh, wait, what, what was he that? He just threw the horns down, man. Wait, is, is that not right? That's, that's so that's much some disrespect. disrespect right there. Oh, I didn't go to the school, so I don't really know. I see. Hey, I'll just tell you, we won the director's cup. You know what the director's cup is? No, I don't know. I see people doing this, okay. so I don't really know what it means. Well, don't do so. that. That's on we'll, me. We'll get you in better places. That's on me. Right. That's on me. We'll, we'll edit that part. Here's up. the thing: if there, if there's anything you see people from Oklahoma doing yeah. related to UT, just don't do that. Okay. I went to school. In Oklahoma. So. At OU or Oh Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, yeah, Tol- Roberts. That's right. Yeah, so that's right. I see people do it sometimes, so I didn't really know what they I was doing. got more Holy Spirit there than OU. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for heard. sure. Amen. Um, I, I wasn't really trained in the way of the Longhorns, so that's that's on me. <laughs> we can um, There's still time. There is time. Come on down to Austin. There is time. Uh, I haven't been in Austin in a while, so 
hopefully we'll make that happen. And he's a two-time Pulse Movement event MVP. <laughs> what that means, I'm really not sure, but we're going to dig into I that. Don't either. And uh, But most importantly, as we always say, he's a one-time child of the Lord. He's going to have Amen. a big mansion in heaven, Come lots on. of jewels, maybe, I don't know. I uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that part out. Uh, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if we can put a round of applause for Mr. Nick Brandt. He's in the wow, building. He's in the house. Cool. There was never, there's never been a better introduction. I know. This made me more uncomfortable in my entire life. For sure. I really appreciate it. That's the earliest our podcast we've ever done. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, you went five, four, three, two, one. I was, I appreciated the descending. Yeah. 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 That's the creativity good. behind Joe Sway over here. Yeah. yeah lots, with a, big lots brain. of creativity. Gets you paid know, the big bucks. Like, who yeah. is this guy that we're talking to today? Yeah. yeah. It's great. <laughs> we'll get there. I promise. Something. Oh, man. I don't know what we do now. Um, <laughs> well, how you been, bro? What's the Lord been walking you through? What's life been like recently? Yeah. Uh, well, it's fun to be here. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. It's fun to sit with you guys. And um, thanks for, for, I don't know why, having me on here. But thank you for wanting to talk to me. And mm. um, and uh, we'll see where we go. Yeah, uh, life's good. I'm here. And uh, as of today, I don't know, when, when does this air from now when you record it usually? A couple, uh, couple weeks. A couple weeks. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, today we're in town, and uh, I am in Dallas, Texas, because we are uh, producing an event uh, gathering yeah. uh, down in Fair Park at the Cotton Bowl, uh, where the University of Texas plays Oklahoma every mm-hmm. single year. Interesting. Kicks and, their butt uh, almost every year. Right okay. there, yeah. yeah. We, we have the winning record, uh, but mm-hmm. it's, it's close. So either case, we're, we're producing a gathering down there. It's uh, the anniversary of the 50th. Um, anniversary of the largest evangelistic gathering in the history of the United States, mm. which happened in 1972 from Billy Graham, who led the way with Bill Bright, who's the founder of Crew. Mm. Uh, Johnny Cash was there. Roger Staubach is the famed Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Uh, lots of incredible people. Over 100,000 uh, young people from across the nation gathered mm. there uh, to be charged to share their faith in this country in a way that they never have before. Uh, and most historians believe that one of the greatest revivals of our country's history uh, came out of that gathering. Mm. Uh, they call it the Jesus Movement and the Jesus People Movement. Yeah. And uh, a lot of great things happened from the 1970s because of, of moments like that. So we're doing the 50th anniversary celebration, but it's also a commissioning of this generation in a postmodern world. What does it look like in 2022, 50 years later? Mm. Uh, to share your faith, um, and to be evangelistic with your life. So that's why we're here. So God's teaching me a lot today about um, about uh, event logistics, about 109-degree heat, <laughs> about loading in production teams in the yeah. middle of, Drinking your of water. hot days, a lot of, a lot of water drinking that's going on, and uh, it's teaching me a lot of patience uh, among some other things that I'm, I'm sure we can get into as well. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Dang. Yeah, I have a... <clears throat> I met a guy, his name is uh, Jordan. Hopefully we're able to get him on. Um, So he's one of the people that were charged to come to the DFW uh, on behalf of Together and just be able to gather up, um, you know, different leaders and hopefully in doing so gather up, um, you know, young adults and things like that. Unfortunately, I just happened to have a retreat the same time that um, this could be going on, so I wanted to make it out. Um, Sounds that, like that a actually, suitable excuse. Yeah, yeah. Crazy <laughs> enough, that's actually uh, part of the heart was that you know a lot of events kind of come into an area and they kind of blow in and blow out, mm-hmm. and uh, it's definitely an event. It's a gathering. Uh, the the goal of this whole thing is really um, to kind of have a moment mm-hmm. to send people off, um, mm-hmm. and then what we're doing is we're we're charging uh, all these young people who are going to come as a young people are probably like around our age or younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, really to ask them uh, to go back to their college campuses, go back to their cities, and to create and develop uh, gatherings of evangelistic in nature. Maybe it's gatherings, maybe it's content, maybe it's movies, maybe it's podcasts like this. What is it that you can go to share the person of Jesus? And uh, we're actually funding uh, Mm -hmm. over 500 people uh, from this gathering that are coming here for this free gathering taking place in Dallas uh, to go do work. And so there's a lot that's going to go on from this whole deal. Right. Jordan is part of the team that moved down here uh, to not just do an event, but to live here and kind of uh, incarnate mm-hmm. in the area for the past year. Right. Uh, Billy Graham's team used to do that all the time. They would send teams of families that would travel the country, uh, take root into a city, and live there and become part of the culture mm-hmm. rather than just come and do an event right. and then be like, deuces, I'm out. Um, our team has been here, thankfully, and uh, 
uh, and then they're going to stay here. So the mm. exciting part is that, that we're actually going to keep an office here, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And so I know you brought up, um, you know, evangelism and what that could look like in going back to their cities, schools, and just, you know, using different outlets to share the person of Jesus and for, mm. you know, the person that, that might not be too familiar, maybe they've just heard the word evangelism. From yeah, the, it's like a cuss word today. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. evangelism, the TV people, you know, it's like... I scrolled on TV one day, yeah. and it was the pastor. He's a, whatever they call it. Televangelist. Um, televangelist, there it goes. Yeah. Um, so how, how would you kind of, I guess, explain, break yeah, down, or teach so good, what evangelism is to somebody who might not know? Yeah, evangelism uh, comes from the word evangelion, which means the uh, to herald the good news. It's good news. It's the whole idea of we are good news bearers. And so if you look at the scriptures, there are, there are offices in the scriptures, mm. uh, and there are giftings in the scriptures, and they, they call the, you may have heard it in like the charismatic world, it's like the fivefold ministry, mm. pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists. One of them is that God has gifted people uh, to reach those who are not in the faith mm. with the good news, and they've, they've specifically given an anointing. And so... Um, this idea of evangelism in 2022, like you said earlier, like we were just joking, mm. man, it's kind of a cuss word because like most of us think of like, you know, I guess in our world, like evangelism is like somebody standing on a street corner and yelling terrible things or, you know, writing on your, you know, writing on your receipt to your your waitress or whatever as you leave, you know, right? Like, Jesus loves you. Yeah, Jesus yeah. loves you and then not tipping. That's terrible. Don't mm-hmm. ever do that. Uh, and then, but, you know, in this culture... Um, we're in a really, you asked earlier, like even what is God teaching you? We're in a very, like you don't need anybody to say, we're in a hostile time. Mm. Uh, So what does being evangelistic, what does heralding, sharing the good news look like? Um, There's some of the questions, the the verse even right now for me that's like deeply embedded in my heart at the moment is, uh, I keep thinking about around this event is 1 Thessalonians 2.8. Paul says we they shared not only the good news, the gospel of Christ, but their very own lives. And so I would say, you ask me that, like, what does that look like now for this generation? What does it look like? What is evangelism today? Well, today it's a culture that doesn't believe in absolute truth, hmm. that doesn't uh, care about your opinion, uh, that is tired of authority that's hurt them, um, and so a lot of the same structures and systems, it's ironically, we're doing this large gathering at a big stadium. Uh, really, it's not even about how many people show up to it because uh, it's about the ones that do. Because it's not like Billy Graham where we're trying to pull people in and have this like massive, you know, huge event. I don't, I don't think that evangelism works that way like it did in the 70s. Mm. But I do think there's something to be said about being equipped in this culture to share your very own life, to share your very own house, um, relationship. Uh, what does it look like to be in hard conversations and disagree? You know, you asked me what the Lord's teaching me earlier. It's teaching me so much about like we're just at a hostile time. Like, you know, we we are we especially as Christians, we're terrible at conflict. Mm. We're terrible at confrontation. Because what would it mean if somebody disagrees with your view? We got to be secure. We got to be now more than ever in this time where we're headed. We got to be more secure than ever in our faith and who we are to share our lives amidst disagreement and to be able to let people talk, empathize with them, hear them, uh, but still not, you know, conflict, you know, good confrontation, healthy confrontation does not mean shared agreement. Yeah. It doesn't. And so, but what does it look like to share your life and share the message um, of people who need it? And then, you know, I think the last thing I'll say about that is just plenty of words to go around, plenty of content to go around. Not a lot of, uh, at least in my experience, not a lot of people's lives that are just saying, open the door, come in the house, be part of my life, let me be part of yours. Uh, let me get a little crazy and mix in Mix in with the uh, the people that maybe I, as a Christian, probably shouldn't quote unquote be with. That's evangelism in yeah. 2022. <clears throat> and I find that very, um, I find it kind of interesting because it, it brings up a point that we were taught about in Bible study um, that I lead into your point, you know, that first Thessalonians 2, 
you know, Paul talks about, you know, not sharing the word, but also their very lives with them and how, you know, they were hardworking people mm-hmm. and they didn't want to rob them of anything and, and everything else. So to those that we in Christendom, as, as I hear yeah. in, in, in the old the old uh, shows, as I like to say, to those of us that are part of that, uh, you know, the body of Christ, yeah. that there are people that we're called to, but mm. we've kept at mm. arm's length because of certain lifestyle. Um, and so if a part of what we're called to do and genuine evangelism, not a one-time conversation because those people may be our neighbors. So what does that look like for us to actually do life with yeah. individuals that we've kept so far away? Yeah. You know, Paul uh, Paul says one of my favorite verses in all scriptures, I think, Chase, maybe even we've talked about this at some point, but like he says this in Philippians when he's sending Timothy to the Philippians. He couldn't, he couldn't make it. And so he sends Timothy in his stead. And the way that he chooses to describe Timothy is to me is incredibly indicative of a way that we ought to be living. And it's this idea of, he says, I'm sending you Timothy who takes a genuine interest in others. Of all the ways that this man descri- decides to describe Timothy, he says he takes a genuine interest and he'll do the same for you. And so there's, this, there's something about, uh, my man, there's something about attention mm. and genuinely listening like in genuinely hearing somebody, there's something to be said about um, caring enough to listen. Like in a culture where, you know, I mean, if someone finishes this podcast, that's a miracle. Like it's just we don't do a lot of like time where we sit still, where we listen, like where we don't pick up our phone, where we don't click it, look at the next thing, wonder what's coming up. Or even like I was just having lunch with somebody before this and all I could think about the whole time was like... I. I couldn't get out of thought before that person. What I could tell they were already thinking about what they wanted to say. Yeah. And I'm guilty too. Don't get me wrong. We all are. But it's the whole idea of like, are we hearing each other? Uh, John Mark Comer is one of my favorite pastors and teachers and leaders right now. He says that our attention is the most, is the spiritual, spiritually speaking, our attention is most under attack. And it's what is stunting our maturity and growth as followers of Christ. We are so attention deprived. Mm. And so, man, to share my life with somebody is to actually care about somebody who's not like me. And it's actually to love somebody um, and give of myself and my resources and my time. And by the way, my money is not the best resource I have. Mm-hmm. It's my time. It will always be the greatest resource I have. Uh, it's why the poorest people in the world can be the happiest people in the world. It, but it's your time. And so I think it looks like really hearing from God, man. That being willing to listen and knowing where to put that time and how to take a genuine interest in somebody, I think that's going to speak a lot. I, at least I know I came to faith by relationship of someone who genuinely cared. Mm. And that to me spoke way, way, way more than anything they ever preached at me. That's not to say that preaching the word, um, we know preaching the word faith grows and comes from the preaching of the word. That's what scripture says. Uh, but there's something to be said about earning the right to be heard. Yeah, and going to that, I think, I think we might have talked about this when I was down in Austin mm-hmm. in March. Um, but the chapter that like continues to like come up to me is Second Peter one, mm-hmm. when he talks about like for every 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 effort to supplement your faith with virtue, virtue knowledge. He goes off on all these things. Uh, knowledge, self-control, self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness, with brotherly affection, with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful. Mm. And for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted and continues to go on. And I think a lot of that, which is pretty evident, is talking about character development Mm. and maturity there, which is something that I think goes to your point about Timothy to where in it we see the qualities of self-control and steadfastness. I think those are directly counter to having a short attention span to where if you're willing to genuinely care for someone and stick with someone, you're going to have that self-control to stay there with them 
And you're also going to have the steadfastness or the endurance or the long suffering to stay there, even if this might not be so interesting up here. Mm. But in it, that shows you showing those qualities allows you to be fruitful, but as well, they're for your maturity of which I, a question that I kind of had as you brought up Timothy and Paul's relationship was like, I'm sure there had to be something that Paul saw in Timothy Mm. and that the spirit had to show him (laughs) for him to have that much trust in him. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I really think to some degree it was that genuine care, but that that came from a place of this unique maturity Mm. that he had at a young age. Mm. And he even talks about that in first Timothy four 12, a little bit. He says he was raised by his grandma, his grandma, his mom, which we all all great men are. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. it's like these women. It says they, they they steeped you, they taught you in the scriptures. You know, these women who just day after day just poured into this young man. Yeah, bro, and it's and it's he would not in First Timothy four twelve, Paul wouldn't have been able to tell him to be an example to others if that wasn't an example worthy of displaying, mm. which shows that maturity. That's good. And going to like something that I wanted to bring up earlier, and it's something that like you know Grant Skeldon. Yeah. This is his like big thing, and I think it's funny that um, it relates here is, for me, I don't think it's always the case, but I think it feeds into it. Maturity definitely comes from the foundation of it is your relationship with the Lord, like your personal relationship with him, your alone time with him, your daily encounters, things like that. But also a key part of it that the Lord gave us is other people discipling you. That's it. And for me, something that I want to encourage y'all with and commend y'all with in this, um, because it's been a conviction of mine related to other events, is um, as I see, which we see this in the in the Great Commission, and I think it's in Matthew and then in Mark, how it's worded two different ways. How one is saying, "Make um, go and preach the gospel," mm. and then the other is go and make disciples mm. of all nations, talking about the parallels of evangelism and discipleship. Mm how evangelism is getting the word out there and then discipleship is actually, once it's out there, like growing those roots deep. Yeah. And for me at least, and I think Grant agrees with it, probably you do as well, <laughs> over the course of however many decades or years, um, I think us in, our, in this country, we've done a good job at some degree of evangelism Yeah. to where it's like, okay, I don't know how many people in the country haven't heard of the name of Jesus, yeah. which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I don't think, I think we take that for granted sometimes because if we go to other countries like China, like me and Josue have been to, it's like, okay, not very many of them know Jesus. But the thing that we have not done well, which is what Grant, this is his mandate, mm-hmm. is to make sure it's known as discipleship, mm-hmm. is that part of once we go to a city and have this huge gathering, making sure we stay there, making sure we continue to grow those people, making sure we equip those yeah. people to walk out this life in a manner that's worthy of their calling. Yeah. And with some events that we want to host over the next year, that's something that we want to do as well. It's like make sure that like there are these practical things that we can give them to continue to walk out rather than just having another conference that just is cool two or three days that we get on a spiritual high and then just on Monday we're back on the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I, you know, I would say genuinely this is discipleship apart without evangelism and it's discipleship is not discipleship. Hmm. Like that's, you're not, you're not making disciples if you're not leading your disciples to go and be sent mm-hmm. into sharing. And mm-hmm. again, sharing the news and, you know, you got to use your words, obviously, like, the Lord is the word. There's power in the word. The word itself, something about speaking, he spoke things into existence. He speaks life mm-hmm. into people. You and I every day hear all the negative things. I always tell the guys I disciple at, at UT, I'm like, hey man, like you got to speak what you see. Why are you so scared to tell somebody what you see? Mm-hmm. So there is power in words. And there's power in the evangelion. There's power in your life shared. But discipleship apart from leading the people you're discipling to share their faith and share it in all multitude of ways. Again, our problem is our paradigm is so stuck on it's this, this, or this, I think, I believe, versus understanding that there's so many ways uh, to be an evangelist. There's so many ways in this culture, in this world, to share the gospel. But the problem is, is when we are making disciples in this culture, discipleship a lot in our culture in America has all, in the past looked a lot like let's gather around that's inwardly focused and it's not very exteriorly focused. Mm-hmm. And so 
not having a mission orientation mind, not having, which you all obviously like this podcast is all about that. Uh, but being outwardly focused, um, in, in your lives that your maturity and your growth as a follower of Jesus has to be about others. The two things at the end of the day, you, we, well, three maybe because go love your neighbor as you love yourself. You need to have a care for yourself, mm-hmm. but then go love your neighbor <clears throat> and go love the Lord your God with all your heart. Those are the three relationships, you, others, God, and that's the kingdom. It's those three relationships. <clears throat> So you brought up a interesting word. I was actually thinking about it. And then you said it. I was like, okay, I'm going to go there and then see how it goes. <laughs> so, you know, you're speaking about the euangelion, the, the sharing of the good news, you know, how good is the feet of those that mm. preach the gospel, that bring this good news to those um, that might not have had it. Um, but then my question comes, um, I think part of my, sometimes where I kind of sit back and I'm like, I think we have to make clear distinction at yeah. times, right? So we're sharing the good news. Mm-hmm. Someone comes to faith, right, through the good news. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, but Jesus, I mean, don't cancel me for saying this, Christians. Um, <laughs> Jesus sure wasn't I'm about to be just... canceled because I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah, as... yeah, no, you won't be canceled by association. Doing a right? favor here. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm, I'm sure you said crazy things. No, I have, I have, I have. But, like, you don't watch The Office. Oh, yeah, that easy. That's that's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> I don't either, actually. There's two of us canceled. Yeah. Um, but, but Jesus wasn't. Guys, please don't cancel me. <laughs> Jesus wasn't I'm sitting now. around talking about you and Galleon all the time. Mm-hmm. But he sat around talking about the what? The kingdom all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Right? So why is it that it's such a. Um, that there's not enough focus on the kingdom yeah. because once you speak kingdom, you help people understand that yeah. this is how you behave, not yeah. behave, but this is how you are as a kingdom yeah. citizen. Um, this is who you are as a kingdom citizen. Um, in the kingdom, you know, we, you know, we're gracious, whatever yeah. the situation is, right? Yeah. I feel there's a big emphasis on getting people saved and then we keep telling them to get saved, 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 yeah. saved. But it's like, Jesus kept telling people about the kingdom. The kingdom's like this. No, I don't disagree like with this. you at all. It's like this. Let me, I don't you think know? there's any canceling here like, because I don't disagree with you, dog. Like, again, what I, our paradigm of what evangelism is, is whack. It's off. What is the gospel? Jesus, we, we don't need to look far, further than Mark, to the first chapter of Mark. What does Jesus himself say the gospel is? He says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe. That's what he says the gospel is. Mm. So the gospel in and of itself, out of Jesus' mind, out of Jesus' mouth, is one sentence. The kingdom of God is at hand. Another translation, near. It's here. It's now. It's arrived. Repent. Turn away from your ways and believe. And so that's it. So my, my sharing of the good news is to tell people the kingdom's here. Mm. I'm living, breathing, operating in it every day. Where I go, the kingdom's in me. So where I end up, my pocket, the kingdom of God, the pocket walks with me. Mm. Where I'm going, I'm put. This is what Jesus did. You gotta understand. Jesus went around healing people, right? So what does he do? He brings the whole idea is that God comes down to earth. We have this whole concept, this whole idea in our minds that like we're trying to, if we believe blah, 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 we're gonna, if we, if we believe the right things, we do the right things, we're gonna end up in this place. And if we don't, we're gonna end up in this place. That's not the gospel. The gospel is. God came down. It's never about us going to somewhere and going to some destination. That's where you and I are right on the same page because I'm going, dog, that's what we've been teaching forever. It's not about me getting to some destination and going to heaven. Heaven is the kingdom come here. The kingdom coming down, it's the kingdom is here now. So stick with me for five more seconds. If the kingdom of God is here and the kingdom of God is at hand, Jesus Perfection enters a non-perfect world and begins to take himself into pushing back darkness. So where Jesus goes, darkness can't be. So what is he doing? He's interacting with dead, sick, 
lame. He's healing them. He's bringing the kingdom to them and bringing them the effects of the kingdom. Right. The effects of the kingdom is what? It's life. It's life. So he's bringing life with him where he goes. Mm -hmm. So what is he saying? He's saying, I'm bringing life here. Heaven is not me going somewhere. Heaven is the kingdom come down. As you receive God, mm -hmm. as you receive what he's done for you, you receive the spirit of God in you. You have the kingdom of God in you. Tim Mackey, I hope y'all can link it, maybe put it in the notes or something. Mm -hmm. Tim Mackey has a phenomenal, phenomenal video on this. Tim Mackey's um, one of the authors of the Bible Project, has a phenomenal video on this, on the new heaven and the kingdom and the earth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, right. I hope you'll link it in the notes here or something. But we it's will. this whole concept that when Chase receives Jesus, where Jesus, where you go, you carry the kingdom with you. You carry the spirit of God. Heaven is in you. That authority is there. The yeah. authority's in you. Heaven's in you. And so when I walk into this restaurant earlier, mm. heaven's sitting at the table. God is with me at this table. Mm -hmm. And I'm either choosing to operate out of this janky the old flesh mm. or I'm choosing to operate mm -hmm. out of the kingdom and out of the spirit. Right. It's, it's, it's complicated, but the kingdom theology and kingdom understanding is, to your point, is everything. And we have for so long been teaching, hey, if I just believe A, B, and C, and you'll get there, that is shortchanging every human being and every person in this world. I honestly think, you can even Google this, last thing I'll say, Google, 30, uh, Google Tim Mackey, M-A-C-K-I-E, 30 minutes sermon to change your life. And it's this like it's been, it's had like hundreds of thousands of hits. It's him teaching this whole concept mm. of like what you and you. This is so listen. This is so much more compelling vision for somebody who's a non-believer than the vision of hey, if you just believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. They're going saved from what? Saved from that? Saved from that guy over there that just had an affair? Mm. That's teaching? Saved from what? Like they're so that's confusing. But compelling is that God's perfection can be here now. God's ways can be here now. You can live and operate it. There's two different worlds. There's physical and there's a spiritual world. And I can operate in the spiritual world right now. Mm. Yeah, because I think... The, We're like opening mm -hmm. a massive can of worms. No, it is, yeah. <laughs> you eight, might be the one who's successful. Well, I know. Well, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is eight years of, yeah. of seminary that, you yeah. know, which anybody can learn this stuff yeah. and hear it. But the question is, do we even want to hear it? Yeah, because mm. Paul says in Romans 14, he says the kingdom... Mm. Right, not not your religion. Right, the kingdom is not eating or drinking. Mm. Going back to the rules, don't eat this, don't drink this. He says the kingdom is not eating or drinking, but what it is, it is righteousness, yes, joy, yeah. and peace in the Holy Spirit, yeah. who now dwells in you. He were right? in the Holy uh, Spirit, yeah, and, and He dwells within you. And like you said, everywhere that you go, you are taking the kingdom. You. With you, right? Uh, First Corinthians, I believe, six when he's talking about um, sexual immorality or yes. keeping yourself, you know, from that stuff. It's like, don't you understand that you've been bought and the yeah. Lord now dwells within you? And emphasizing the point that it's the kingdom is with you. So whenever you go do your business with the harlot, in a sense, well, he's using that you're analogy. You're taking the kingdom That's with it. you in, in in this analogy. But I think. When we, like you say, when we just focus on... What's funny, though, too, is like Christians will always say, I'm just advancing the kingdom. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. You ain't advancing nothing. Mm -hmm. God's advancing the kingdom yeah. Yeah. by revealing himself to people, opening eyes, changing hearts, and planting the kingdom of God in his people. And what's the whole goal? You have the kingdom in you. You have the kingdom. I have the kingdom. He wants to restore. He's being patient to come back because he wants more people to have the kingdom. And he is going to make all things new. The whole idea is he's going to, he's restored you. He is restoring you, right? He's mm -hmm. redeemed you and he is restoring you. Mm -hmm. You're a, you were a sinner, mm -hmm. now a saint, mm -hmm. being restored mm -hmm. towards the great day, which is when you will be glorified in God's sight. Mm -hmm. You'll be made perfect and new. You're in process. That's why we always say you're in. we're a progress. We're imperfect people pursuing a perfect God. We are in progress. What is the scriptures? Open it up. It's like an MRI on me to realize something ain't right. I ain't there yet, but I'm going to be. And I'm not the same guy I was a year ago. Right. And I'm not crawling anymore. I might be slowly walking, falling. But this idea that you are being restored and that God wants to now, listen, this is the part of the evangelism. 
He wants to use you as a restorative agent to help restore things because he's going to restore all of it. That's where it gets mind-blowing that I'm over here and I'm a scrub that's effed up 14 times to Sunday today. I mean, I've messed up so much today already. Mm. But I'm not hanging on that. I'm hanging on the reality that I'm being restored. And I stand on the cross and that I'm free. And that he sent me out And now where I go, I carry him with me and I carry his ways with me and I can choose to operate in the kingdom today or I can choose to operate in self, which is flesh. Mm. And every time I operate myself, I bring death with me. And every time I operate in kingdom, I take life with me. Yeah, and that's John 15, asking for the Holy Spirit to have more of him, less of us. John 15, 5, I'm the vine, you're the branch. You who abide in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Apart from that, you ain't doing nothing. (laughs) That's the Nick Brandt translation. You ain't doing nothing. That's facts. (laughs) I get fired up about it because you you literally opened up something for me that is like, it changed my life. I, I, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't grow up being told, you know, I didn't grow up in that. It was 19, 20 years old. I was on a film set on NBC for Friday Night Lights. I was filming a show. And this man impacted my life. He sat down, took a genuine interest in my life. He started mm-hmm. telling me about Jesus. He cared about me more than he told me about things. And eventually he earned this right to be heard. And I started sharing. He started sharing the gospel. Mm-hmm. And he shared with me the kingdom. You can live in the kingdom here at the University of Texas. You can have joy, life, peace, patience, hope, all these things. That's the kingdom. You can be restored from the things that you're plagued with and addicted to. You can actually be useful and have purpose and hope. The four questions that all human beings have are what? Where did I come from? Where am I going? What is my purpose? And what is right and wrong? What is morality? The kingdom answers all four of those. Where did I come from? Where am I going? What is my purpose? And what is right and wrong? Mm -hmm. And he says, you can actually be a hope-filled, restorative agent where you go by operating the kingdom, by carrying the life of Christ in you, his spirit in you. That's why Jesus said, it's better that I leave so that I could give all of you a piece of me. Mm -hmm. Because if there's only one Jesus, he's a person. And if he was here, we'd all be fighting over him. And I do, you know know what? (laughs) There's only one Jesus. And you know what? We'd be fighting over him. Mm. Because we'd all want time with him. And that's Mm. what the scriptures show you. Mm. Jesus would have people coming after him left and right Mm -hmm. all the time. And he ran away and hid and got away with God because there's only one of him. Mm. But guess what? He leaves his spirit in us. Mm. And now we got his spirit so all of us can have a piece of him. <laughs> it makes me laugh because I, you know, back to Bible study and I'm like, <clears throat> sometimes I feel like when I say things, I try to prepare people so I'm like, we won't get canceled or not. But <laughs> but to your point, it's... I'm at, you know what, dog? I'm at the point I'm like, cancel me. Yeah, let's get canceled. Like, right? cancel. Yeah, there ain't yeah, nothing yeah. to cancel from. <laughs> right. I ain't important enough. Right, cancel right, me. Right, you know right. what I mean? You know, cancel the, <laughs> sorry, the small podcast. Sorry to interrupt. But you're good. But, it's, but, but to your point, it's... it's um, it almost sounds blasphemous, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's so good news. You know, it's the Holy Spirit is the gift that mm-hmm. was promised. And, and somebody said, because obviously we magnify Christ Jesus. We all love the Father. Mm-hmm. We don't care about the Spirit. And if we do, it's like, you know, just to do all these various things. But it's, no, like the three are in one. Three in one. It's the Spirit who is here present with us. Mm-hmm you know, walking and dwelling, abiding in us and convicting hearts and changing lives. It's the mm. spirit that's doing that. And we ascribe it to Jesus because all three are in one, but it's the role of the spirit here on the earth. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Jesus said, I have to go. You guys don't want me to stay here. Have to. Like, <laughs> have to I go. have to go, <laughs> you know? And because if I don't come, the is it Pericles? Mm, the Pericles, yeah, yeah, Pericles. The Pericles yeah. is not going to come yeah. if I don't go. Mm. You know, and, and I think um, I think we've, in the church, we've done a great job of magnifying the Father, great job of magnifying the Son, and an okay job of talking about the Spirit. Mm. You know? I guess it depends <clears throat> on what church you're at. Yeah, that's you know, true. You know that's saying? true as well. Like, yeah. It really does. Cause, and then, because I think the criticism would be on you know, charismatic churches on the other end for a lot of people that, you know, they don't talk about, you know, there's the Bible churches, right? There's the mm-hmm. Father, the Son, and the Holy Bible. Right, right, right. And then there's, you know, and those are the churches you're talking about, right? And then there are these other churches that people would say, well, you make so much of this, but not of that. 
You know, that's why we have 32,000 denominations in the Christian faith, which is a very sad and scary thing. That's not very helpful, by the way, when you're right. talking about evangelism to share, share <laughs> yeah, that with no. people. But, uh, you know, it, it is. It's, it's that I just, you know, but I, there is a convergence. And my, again, my two sins that are probably worth one is I think we are in a place where this generation, probably the people listening and watching this, uh, really do not care about the denominational things that once laid in our parents with. Mm -hmm. And what they care about is there's a convergence of uh, a lot of theological worldviews and churches that are colliding and uh, biblical, you know, people are asking, questioning biblical theology and what is from God and what is not. I mean, honestly, it's a miracle if anybody in this generation is even reading the Bible. Mm. It's a miracle if they're even trying to understand where it came from. The questions that plague this generation are the the uh, the veracity of it. Is it real? Is it not? How do we know? Uh, that's very real and reliable questions. They probably won't be the same questions with our kids. Mm. Honestly, that's just what's plaguing this time and this generation where truth is at and under fire. Um, so I think you're seeing a huge push. In my experience, what I see in this country at least, uh, where followers of Jesus are converging and working together, um, and are putting aside a lot of differences in a lot of ways mm. to highlight some of the big things that matter. Um, frankly, I think we're going to have any choice in the coming years. Yeah. I think uh, if scriptures are accurate, then it's going to get a lot harder before it gets better. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, we got off on some sort of tangent. Yeah, we did. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. I don't think I we covered we're... any question you've had, <laughs> but that's all. okay. No, we covered the first one. That was solid. Um, just to see, because I know we all have different time things right here. When you got to head out here in a minute? Yeah, I got to go right now. Okay, you go ahead and head out. So y'all want to say any goodbyes, anything like that? Man, this is fun. Yeah. I'll get your number from him. That's good. That's <laughs> yeah. good. We'll Come down to Austin. Sounds good. I, we'll got do. An, I got enough rooms to, to... There are many rooms in my father's ah, house. Ah, yes. Yeah, so yeah. As there <laughs> should be in your father's kingdom. As there should be. Oh, my gosh, bro. Uh, Thank you for taking the time, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's so great to be um, you too, man. Heard a lot about you. God, man. God bless you and all you're doing. Man. You got it? There we go. Got to show the shoes. Got to show the shoes. Hey, there we go. <laughs> um, we go for about 10 more minutes. Yeah, and then, because I want to honor your time no, as well. I got, I got, I got till 4.15. Yeah. It'll be good. So Four. I know one of the things I for sure want to talk about, which <laughs> I sent over last night, um, and we've talked about this in the past. Is this good, by the way? Should yeah, I yeah, yeah. Bro, over? you good, you good, you good. We good. Okay. Um, right, cool. I know, as I said, we've talked about this in the past, and it is one of those things mm-hmm. that I really look up to you for and that I've seen is so unique about what God is doing in you mm. and I want to give you the opportunity because I want to learn what is going on with it but basically like you have this unique freedom mm. that the Lord talks about in like Galatians 5 it's like for freedom Christ has set us free mm. those are those who are free are free indeed <laughs> and I don't see very many people living with that kind of freedom mm. freedom to to not have shame about the joy that they have, hmm. to not have shame about being around the people that they want to be with um, and loving the Lord and loving life and enjoying it. Hmm. So whatever you want to share, like where did <laughs> like where did that come from? Like hmm. what inspired this? How did you get to that place? And I know well, it's a long what journey. What inspired but... <laughs> it was the life of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll unpack that a little more. First of all, thank you. That's a very humbling thing to hear. Uh, you might be surprised to hear that I don't feel most days like I'm very free. Um, I don't, I, I know, I guess the closer people get to me, the more I bet they probably would share the same thing. Uh, <laughs> and maybe that's typically all of us. Um, I have my mentor, guy who led me to faith, helped me grow, uh, discipled me through college. Uh, would used to joke with me all the time. He'd say, he'd look at me and he'd squeeze his fist and he'd go, and this was like when I was 19, he'd be like, hey, stop gripping. Mm. And, he, and he would tell me that every day I saw him. Mm. I'd be like walking away from uh, like a, a meal with him and he'd go, hey, brother, stop gripping. What are you gripping on today? And he was like, and he would just constantly open his fist to me and be like, hey, just hold it loosely. And so, you know, maybe like years of trying to let go of some things mm-hmm. as best as I can. I, man, dog, I really don't feel many days I am as free. Um, I will say there is a part of my spirit 
and who I am that I, I just feel the older, the more I get older, the less, and I, this is going to sound so arrogant, even saying it. I don't care what people a lot of days think of my perception of Jesus and how I live and operate. Um, it's got me in a lot of trouble. You know, it's got me into a lot of trouble. It's got a lot of pushback. Uh, people, some people say it's intimidating. Some people say I'm giving you a lot of the negative side of it. Some people uh, don't want to like being friends with it um, because, uh, you know, I, I just, I spent so long chase in my life. Like, especially I was, when I was working for Passion and Passion Conference, Passion City Church, um, you know, it was a very public role. I was a college pastor there, yeah. young adult pastor, it's a very public role. And everybody um, was watching you. And it was a very social media driven culture. Yeah. And, you know, every little thing I did felt scrutinized for good or for bad. And I, I think I just went over the edge when I left. And I, when I did resign, I, and love, by the way, love Louie and Passion and everybody. Mm-hmm. There's amazing people. They're friends. I would do anything for them still. But it taught me a lot about my insecure self at the time. And my insecure self that had a magnifying glass on it uh, genuinely spent so much energy worried about people who were going to think of me. And the more I read about Jesus, the more I saw was a man that was incredibly misunderstood, incredibly misrepresented, and I think to this day still the most misrepresented and misunderstood human to ever walk the face of this Mm -hmm. earth. Uh, One day, they're praising him. The next, they're sawing off the leg of the stool that he stands on. And I've been a pastor for eight years. I was a pastor for eight years. And that was my experience as a pastor. One day, I'm getting praised. And another day, I'm getting knocked off the stool. And so you get to this point where you go, God has made me, for whatever reason, some way that I like to challenge things. And I like to speak up on things that people won't speak about. And I think... Living that way has allowed me to live freer because I just kind of go, we joke about the cancellation thing earlier. I'm like, <laughs> okay, so cancel me. Mm-hmm. Like what, what's the worst that's going to happen to me? I, probably some hard things. And, but at the same time, like there's a level of like having the sense of like, I'm saying what I want to say. I'm meaning what I'm wanting to mean. I'm being with the people I want to be with. I'm unafraid of what everyone's going to think if I post this, do this, be that. You know, I mean, people, I've been around some amazing people in my life, people that a lot of people know. And I used to have a fear of talking about that because, oh, they're all going to think that I'm bragging or I'm egotistical. And guess what? They all thought I was bragging and I'm egotistical. Not all, but a lot of people did. I can't control it. But what I can control and what I can do is I know my relationship with God. I have the spirit of God. I know what he's convicting me of. I have a small circle of close-knit people around me, and the spirit is tested by two things that I know about, scripture and other believers who are following scripture. Their witness and testimony. Their witness and testimony. So therefore, I got people that I do let call me out, and sometimes they're like, chill, bro. Like you don't need you need to delete that or you should not do that, and I've gotten myself in trouble at times where I've gotten let go from things because, but then again I go again I go there are times and there are seasons there's places the difference I think in my maturity I hope and pray to God, the older I get the more I'm able to figure out what's a mountain and a molehill, to figure out how to be free and operate in this way, um, to be to continually be unafraid to um, to be continually unafraid to live what I believe with conviction God is telling me to do. And I do genuinely with everything in me, Chase, believe he doesn't make me just to endure this world. He made me to enjoy it, enjoy the people, and be a light. So that's probably a really long-winded answer to your question. I I just want to not be afraid of other people. And I think um, the spirit, it says in Scripture, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So... For me, going back to the spirit again, everything's about hearing and responding to that voice. And if I do, I feel like it lets me be more in my best days, which by the way, today's not one of them. <laughs> coming up that hey, highway. Either. Coming either. up that highway earlier wasn't one of them. <laughs> but in my best days, it's when I'm less about the self and more in the spirit. 
And when I'm operating more and listening to that voice and responding to it immediately, that tends to be where I, I, I tend to operate in this freedom, that uh, this, this lack of care of what everybody else around me thinks of me or is going to, you know, I hope yeah. that answers some of it. Yeah, bro, definitely. And I think maybe something that I don't know if these two connect and maybe even if me bringing this up and you thinking mm. about it connects them in your mind, like that'd be cool. But I feel like there's something in your conflict resolution skills mm. and your ability to have those and the, and the maturity of those in you mm. that I've seen that allow you to, mm. to be able to like even just take little risk and just be free. There is like this saying that's that's really resonated with me a lot recently of like we ain't, we can't outrisk his faithfulness. Come on. But I think that would also be true to like some areas with friends. Like obviously there's lines, but to a way. And so with that, I think since you have experiences with this conflict resolution with a lot of the experiences that the Lord has brought you through with a lot of the I'm sure conversations you've had in the past, because yeah. I'm sure that that wasn't something that was like there <laughs> at the start, but something that you've grown in yeah. that gives you um, maybe a subconscious or conscious confidence to then be free to know that, Hey, if I do step over, it's like, okay, like we'll be able to talk this out to be, in a loving way. And I see that also, you haven't met him yet, but one of mine and Chaz's friends, Danny Bryan, he's with circuit riders over in so LA. Cool. He um, he lives in a very unreserved way, mm. which that's how he puts it. Is like instead of freedom, he just says unreserved. Mm. But still, that same sense of like, Lord, I just want to be, I just want to hold nothing back from what you want me to do. Mm. And with that, is because of all this this gift of wisdom that the Spirit has given him, but also um, the ability to take that into conflict resolution. Wow. Where if there's anything that does stir up, he's he's courageous like you are to face that yeah. and be like okay like let's talk this so out good. let's submit this to the lord and go from there yeah, yeah i for whatever reason god i mean people who are watching this that know me if i you know i'll repost this or whatever like they'll see this and there'll be a lot of people watch this and laugh and some will roll <laughs> their eyes yeah some will I, you know some know like you know for whatever reason <clears throat> what's the other gospel by the way of 2022 it's the enneagram uh everybody you know it's the the gospel of the enneagram I'm an eight. I am a challenger. Okay. Um, challengers are the most loved people when they need them, and they're the most hated people when they don't need them. Um, and I and I, I say that. And I'm sure there's a lot of opinions. Please don't DM these guys or me. I don't care. Uh, we don't care. Yeah, we don't care. <laughs> uh, but point being, like, I am a challenger, and it's gotten me into a lot of goodness, and it's gotten me into a lot of difficulty. And I would say my experience in general, is that most Christians are not good at confrontation and conflict. And then there's some like me that need to do the opposite. You need to chill. Like, you need to come back. Like, my challenge is, is to know what's a mountain and what's a molehill. My prayer is that I would get better the older I get of knowing what to raise fuss about or what to challenge or what to push or what to say and what not to say. Mm-hmm. The need that I have is to learn, I need to continue to pray that God's spirit would give me a discernment to have a filter. And uh, and I would say that I've just learned through relationships with people. One of my best friends, he'll tell you, like it's been one of the, probably blessed me the most because I probably got a lot of, if I'm honest with you, a lot of hurt from this stuff too because a lot of people have told me, you are conflictual, you are confrontational, you are uh, someone who will have a hard conversation and will fo- not force it, but she'll engage it. Yeah. Um, I get that from Jesus. Like, I think, I hope, maybe I'm off, but here's a guy in the Garden of Gethsemane who it says when a whole crowd of soldiers came for him, it says he entered into, he says he stepped forward. They said, they're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, he, and he, it says he stepped forward. And when it says he came forward or he stepped forward, depending on your translation, it said the whole legion of soldiers fell. So there was power in him entering into that conflict and not running from it. At the same time, Jesus only describes his heart one time in Scripture, and here's the tension. He describes his heart as gentle and lowly. Hmm. He describes himself as someone who's kind and approachable. So I 
I want to be more of that part of Jesus that is gentle and approachable, but unafraid to step forward into conflict, yeah. to engage something when I see it, um, and to hope people will have the conversation. Most, I would say, my experience, most people don't like conflict and don't. They'd rather let it go, and they'd rather stuff yeah. it down. But I would tell you, my richest relationships, the closest relationships I have, the most meaningful ones have lasted time, have been the ones who are willing to every single time be willing to engage and enter into hardship, hard, difficult things. And I, I mean, isn't that like what marriage is too? Like we don't quit on each other. I mean, why do we only, pra- why do Thomas, we- you want to come in here <laughs> to let us know what marriage is like? Why, but why do we only practice that? Like I'm not yeah. going anywhere mentality in marriage. Why do we wait until 19, 20, if you're in Texas, 20 years, if you're <laughs> anywhere else, like, in, in the world, like 30 something, like why do we wait till that moment to throw two people into a house, put them where, t- where, you know, when two things are close to each other, it causes friction. Why do we wait to practice that yeah. in marriage? Like engage with the people and stop this, man, Christians, especially we have a quitting, we have a hard, hard habit. We have a terrible habit of quitting, writing people off, saying it's easier to find somebody else because there's access to everybody. And I just, I don't want to be that guy, bro. Like, yeah. I don't. I want, I want to, I want to put up a fight for the things that matter. I'm praying for more discernment. I want more discernment. I, have, I can be the first to say, even on this, like, I'm, I have failed countless times in my confrontation and conflict. Same. But me I want to me in the opposite way, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Cause, yeah. Because well, you know my personality by now, and I'm yeah. I'm not really someone well, who enjoys probably, conflict. And, and the, usually the opposite side, it's a fear of what can happen. Yeah. And most people that engage in conflict with me that are afraid to, at times, like, they'll tell you they're fearful of what can happen. And, uh, and, and I understand that. Um, but I want, I want to be a safe space. I want to be a better person to be a safe space, to sit at a table and say, we can come to the table because we have the same blood in us. And... We ought to be the example of how to solve this stuff. And we ought to be the reconcilers and forgivers. And let's deal with it. We don't have to be best friends, but let's deal with it. Let's not let things go unsaid and unchecked. And um, not everybody always wants to do that. And so yeah. what does Paul say? In and so as much as it is within me to deal with it. Yeah. It's up to you. What can you do to your fullest extent? Yeah, bro. And yeah, I do think that the aim and the growing that you brought up of wanting to discern better, like Ephesians 5, 10 or 12, like tried mm. to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Mm. Like that's something that, um, which I know we'll probably talk about here afterwards, but that Axel, the yeah. the girl Jasmine Tate, or Jasmine Wheeler now who leads that, um, it's like one of her life verses. And it's like try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord in everything. And mm. I think to encourage you, bro, like even in... How long we probably a year and a few months we've known each other yeah. now. Like even in that, I feel like I've seen a lot of growth. Thank you. And it's been cool being able to, which I've sent a couple of them over to you in text, but being able to like pray for you mm. as well. And just f- seeing some of the things that I feel like I'm receiving from the Lord for you to pray over to you, to mm. encourage you with like er, things that, I haven't really prayed over very many people. Mm. And I don't want to say that's necessarily out of a place of where you're at in life right now, but out of a place of your hunger to grow in this moment. And the fact that you are fertile soil in this time to receive that intercession from the spirit to then be able to apply that Instead of his feet and be like, all right, Father, like, what can I do? Like, what can I do better? It's, it's hard, bro. I, I actually posted about this the other day. Matt Chandler said this in a sermon recently. He said, I will fail you. And he stopped. And he said, I will fail you. And I will, he goes on to say, like, I'm just going to, I'm going to fail. It was, I'm paraphrasing all this. But mm-hmm. then he says, because I am human. And I think in our culture, again, opinion and conjecture, but in our culture, Hurt people hurt people. And people that have been hurt have a relational deficit, usually. 
I'm, I've been one of those people many times in life. Mm-hmm. I've, a, I've had a deep relational deficit. Me too. I grew up in a space where um, a lot of relational deficit came out of that home. And, and so we come, my point is we come from different backgrounds. Going back to the listening thing earlier, getting to know somebody, understanding someone's pain, empathizing, caring enough, rather than just writing people off. It's like my house was conflictual in a lot of times. So I've been afraid and learned not to be scared of conflict. I dated a girl once who it terrified her whenever we had any slightest bit of conflict because to her and her house, they never had conflict. Correction, everybody has conflict. They didn't have conflict publicly in front of her parents in front of her. It was happening behind closed doors. So to her, when there was any raising of voice or any like heightened passion, like and I'm a passionate guy, it was like, oh, whoa, this is scary. Mm-hmm. And it means that this is terrible and the thing is, the thing is tanking right now. And so our relationship didn't work. And so I think this whole idea, bro, just like how do we give each other patience how do we meet each other and try to empathize and understand, like, where are you coming from, dog? Like, what's, where's your house? Where have you been hurt? Understanding, like, you see these Karens going off in Starbucks, and you're like, <laughs> that woman is in pain. Mm-hmm. That's what I see. But what does our culture do? They're all wa- they're like, get out of here, Karen. They're all waving goodbye at her. They're like, get out, get out. They're all kicking her out. Does she deserve it? Probably. But you know what? I look at that video and I go, that woman's in pain. Yeah, and like a driver, again, I'll bring him up again, but a driver that Axel has, because they have like certain things like character over gifting, Mm. his presence of performance. One of them they have is intercession over infatuation. And even infatuation from the point of just being infatuated with that circumstance and getting to the point where like you're laughing at it Mm. rather than seeing as you're doing right now where that person could be at Asking the father what their heart is. Gosh. Where their heart is at and yeah, what his heart bro, is. And you just said it too. Asking the father. Like, I, if there's one thing I would die on in this whole episode, it's that I think if you ask the Lord to speak to you about somebody, he will. Mm-hmm. And I think it's anybody. Mm-hmm. Because I just genuinely believe he wants to use us to care for that person. To be his healing hands. To minister. And so... Even if it's a small little thing, I think if I take the time to ask, like he will, he'll say something. Yeah, bro. He probably already is, especially if you're around that person all the time. But anywho. If we're willing to hear. Yeah, if you want to <laughs> yeah, hear. Bro. Yeah, bro. Um, well, I appreciate you um, making the drive over here. That's fun. Taking the time. Dallas traffic, baby. Bro. Gotta love it. Hey, what's worse, Austin or Dallas? 100% down. <laughs> I, <Yeah. agree. laughs> I agree. I agree. I can get anywhere in Austin in 15 minutes and I know the two roads to avoid. So uh-huh. everybody complains about it in Austin, but it's funny. Like all these people are moving here from LA in Austin. And like you talk to the people from LA, they're like, have you lived anywhere else? <laughs> like this is heaven. I'm like, For yeah, real. it really is. But, um, but no, man, I appreciate you coming over in the midst of the busy week. Um, and it's just good to see you. Yeah. Too, I love you, bro. Man. You're doing good things in life. It's, uh, you're one of the most humble steadfast um genuine guys i know and it's easy to it's easy to do anything for you bro thank you man. You got a lot of people that love you thank you man i appreciate yeah. you but yeah y'all that'll be a wrap for us today thank y'all so much for tuning in uh we'll be linking all of nick's information all of pulse's information all of whatever else you want to link <laughs> yeah i got some by the time this airs uh some more exciting news coming out. So let's go. We'll, we'll have you link that hopefully. There we go. So we'll include all of that in the description. Um, all the information for perspectives will be in the description below as well. If you want to support us, the outreaches, the podcast, everything that we're doing. Um, so goodbye from Joe Sway. But <laughs> thanks again, Nick. So until next time, much love. God bless. Peace. And good <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> <laughs>